Welcome back, guys, to another Crypto Just Sunday. Today in Cyprus is a beautiful sunny day. Uh, you can see from Steve's a little bit reddish. Uh, he went to the beach where uh, everyone had a great week, I think, in Cyprus. But the prices are increasing. That's what we're going to discuss about today. Uh, we have very nice topics for you guys this week and updates as well. We have, uh, we're have we going to discuss about how the petrodollar will be replaced once again, maybe. Uh, the rise of the ruble, maybe the gold will go to the moon and uh, the crypto boom is coming again. We're all the way to five trillion. Uh, we're going to start with our usual and then start saying hello to everyone that joined. Don't forget to write for which country you're writing. And it's very important if you have uh, if you have anyone from Sri Lanka, because we're going to discuss about what's happening right there, or if you have a fa family there. Okay, so we're going to uh, discuss about coin market cap. Like we start every episode with coin market cap, we're above two trillion. We're almost fifty percent up from last week. We had a little bit of spike in the middle of the week. I remember you <laughs> called me. Around Wednesday, Thursday, we had the spike up around 15%. Everything went up. We yeah. What's going <clears throat> yeah, on. I think we're at 1.9 up to 2.17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2.15. <clears throat> so last week, our theme, you know, everybody joining uh, Crypto Chat, hello. Um, as you guys know, this is a time machine. We take you into the future. We tell you what's going to happen next week. We tell you it's going to happen six months. And if you've been watching for the last year, you, you get a sense that we are dialed in <clears throat> pretty well to the trends. And uh, our predictions uh, have been pretty good. Um, so, you know, we were talking last week that uh, two trillion feels like a base, you know, because there'd been a lot of consolidation. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it was going to be like today we we're going to tell everybody it's 1.9 again. <clears throat> I can't believe it's only 2.15. It's, um, it's a matter of time before this absolutely explodes. Um, <clears throat> it could happen anytime over the next 12 months. Uh, I uh, wouldn't I would say that it's not longer than that before this explodes. It's within 12 months. It could even be in uh, six weeks. But uh, these are this is the approximate time frame for uh, how, how our net our analysis is showing um, crypto set to rise yeah. for very, very obvious reasons. I don't think it's rocket science to, yeah. to think that <laughs> it's highway to five trillion. <laughs> if we can yeah. use the sound yeah. metaphor. OK, so let's say hello to everyone. We're above two trillion. We stayed above two trillion, up fifteen percent. Uh, coming up is the NFTs market. So let's say hello to everyone. Sabrina, the first comment, uh, supporting the Limasul team. Al, uh, Maobi, Starboy, say uh, okay. Don't forget to write from which country you're coming. Nigeria. Um, let's see. Cyprus, I suppose. Yeah. Someone. We have a uh, Bali in here today. Uh, Chumaka, yeah. welcome, welcome, uh, Chumaka. It's great to have Lagos, of Indonesia course, one of our admins in TFA. This is a perfect time to make sure yeah, that we have to we have to download the football app and start earning TFC. A lot of Kiriagos there in Cyprus. Yeah, um, yeah, Kyrgios. great to see everybody. Yeah, everyone is joining in right now. Uh, that's it, maybe. That's a new state from Nigeria. Hello, Samson. Okay, so back to our usual. We have added a new category, the NFTs. Last week, I don't know, maybe it was the same market cap. Yeah, so we the same. It, yeah it's, it's about the same. Ten, ten uh, billion dollars $10 billion. of market cap for all the NFTs that are out there combined. The volume is up, though. It was 50 uh, million, mm -hmm. 56 million maybe last week. Now it's at 72, so there's a bit of... Uh, a little bit of traction, a little bit of market cap increase. You could see, um, yeah. yeah, NFTs are uh, they're coming back strong. Uh, we have two um, two examples for people who, um, and this is a very good start as well. Twenty five thousand items sold in twenty four hours. So, or is that uh, that might be the sales of ETH? Is that the oh, ETH sales? Yeah, maybe it's in ETH. That's even no, because it's volume in twenty four hours. You're right. Total sales. I don't know. Maybe it's items. That's specific items. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good statistic as well. We have to check that out. What that yeah. means. Um, you know, you, um, NFTs are more than just um, uh, more than just uh, you know crypto punks, right? Um, take a look at the example of what people are doing with NFTs. 
in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, they're selling NFTs like a war bond to raise money. So you can see uh, NFTs have a lot of uh, use potential. Um, they could be used for VIP programs in restaurants. They can be used for ticket sales. That, that hasn't started much yet, but the potential is there. And um, I think, of course, any NFT adoption drives crypto adoption, but I do expect NFTs. We talked a, a bit about the Gartner uh, hype cycle, you know, where first uh, something gets overhyped and then it drops down mm -hmm. into the trough of disillusionment and then it sort of rises up into, uh, and, um, you know, NFTs have been on a drop, but when you see use cases like this, uh, you can be sure that uh, um, NFTs are, are, um, are gonna be here and, and, and increasing in usage in the long run. Uh, and then we have the pudgy penguins, yep. which that's what people usually think about when they think about NFTs. Uh, pudgy penguins NFT collection looks to the new chapter. They sold uh, uh, the project out. 8,800 digital penguins uh, were sold in a 750 ETH deal. Mm. Um, Andreas, can you calculate how much 750 you think it's that times 30, I think 34 2.5 million is that no that's no, no. Correct. Okay, let me check. no it's, it's got to be so well maybe maybe that's right yeah it's correct okay 2 .5. all right so 2.5 million they sold that collection out now <clears throat> i wanted to point this out because pudgy penguins are pretty cool but they don't have anything on the uh silly pandas and the silly pandas staking program is going to start late, later this month for um uh, for Panda. And uh, we have uh, the reason that this project was sold out under us is because nothing was happening. They promised uh, more utility. They okay. promised that there would be some sort of roadmap and sort of game, some sort of something, and it wasn't happening. Uh, so I'm just saying that whoever has gotten silly pandas, um, you know, you're in the hands of a team that actually delivers uh, real functionality and value. And as everybody knows, we're kind of a quieter. We're a smaller, powerful community that will get a lot of notoriety uh, towards the end of the year once, you know, we're, we're not, uh, because we're coming off of a Greek island, you know, we're not um, getting as much publicity yet. But once the publicity machine starts up, which is inevitable, we're just putting out awesome stuff and our community is amazing. As that catches and we start getting influencers in our community who can move things. We have the goods, you know, so Pudgy Penguins move, doesn't have anything on us, but that's again what people are thinking of with traditional um, yeah. NFTs. And I think if you scroll down, how much are those things uh, trading for? They're 2.4 yeah. ETH per Pudgy Penguin is yeah. a minimum, mm -hmm. a minimum. minimum. Yeah, they're, they're cool, but you know, really, you, with 10 euros, you can pick up a, yeah. a silly panda. It's true, and, silly and, pandas again. You guys um, really have to jump on that. It's yeah. insane. It's a giveaway. Uh, remember, it took a few years for um, uh, uh, the crypto punks, yeah. you know, to go up. So it doesn't matter. Some things pump faster, but if they're really good, good quality, good, you know, good use case, good community supporting it, and as our community grows, every single thing attached to it's going to go. Don't forget about your silly pandas. Yeah. All right, so now let's move into um, the big news. Yeah, the world. Yeah. So we've been talking about War of the Worlds. And, um, you know, one of our theories is that uh, the economics are driving, um, drive wars. And the dollar wanted to take over the whole world because <clears throat> the only way to buy oil and gas was dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of... Um, uh, people that don't want to be, um, you know, put under the uh, the dollar empire because you know countries and institutions. Maybe take a look at the uh, at the meme I sent you about what happens to people who are forced to accept the dollar for trading of oil. Yeah, and uh, what happens? And um, okay, so a few few different people in the last uh, few decades have. Um, um, Saddam Hussein dropped the dollar back in 2000 uh, and, he, and he started accepting euros in exchange for a selling of oil and gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, within three weeks of that announcement, they invaded the first uh, uh, Gulf War and then they, they did the second and, uh, and they, they hung him. Uh, 
<clears throat> Gaddafi dropped the dollar in 2009. He was creating a you know gold-based African uh, currency. And uh, same fate. Um, <clears throat> Assad uh, dropped the dollar in 2006, and you know his uh, Syria got torn in pieces, and so many people got killed because really bankers are the biggest uh, uh, sociopaths on on the planet. Uh, they um, a million lives to a banker is nothing. They don't care if to prop up the dollar. If they had to feed a million uh, bones and souls into the machine, they do. They've consistently done it in, uh, in their sleep. Um, <clears throat> Putin dropped the dollar in 2022. However, what happened was they found um, they found that uh, a, a country that was way too powerful to a bullion uh, to submission. Now, this is a different way of looking uh, at what's going on. Uh, our sympathy and hearts go out to all the people who are caught in this uh, war, which is um, you know initiated by bankers for the purpose of hegemony over the whole world. And um, you know we under we understand that, uh, but I'm just saying what the geopolitics are, uh, and uh, that that that's the case. So, if you jump back to that announcement now, we talk about how big this is. Instead of um, instead of uh, selling uh, gas and oil for dollars, they sell it for rubles. Yeah, That's which is well, isn't that what the U.S. is doing? Except the U.S. doesn't sell much oil and gas. So actually, uh, what they've done now is they've backed the ruble with the sale of gas. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, I think there's that the Russia supplies forty percent of the gas to Europe. And they do uh, four, four, uh, four uh, million barrels a day, 4.6 million barrels a day of, uh, of, wow. of oil mm. to the world out of a hundred billion out of a hundred million barrels that is sold worldwide and used worldwide four four million of those barrels, 4.6 million are Russian. So the, they're, so uh, this is going to make the, the, the ruble to be super strong because he did a second thing, Andreas, he backed, the ruble with gold mm -hmm. and he said that uh 5, rubles equals one gram of gold so he gold backed it and he gave it a utility as the only way to buy gas now if that was a cryptocurrency mm -hmm. it's going to the moon right now the only negative thing here is that he can print an unlimited amount of rubles the russian central bank can, can print an unlimited amount of rubles which makes it they can dilute that yeah. superpower they have, but they have that superpower. The world has shifted. Yeah. And this has made Russia the preeminent uh, likely superpower if um, you know they're gonna have to withstand uh, every single force that uh, the banking empire can throw at them. They're gonna use their tools of the press uh, which is one of their, they have this, you know, the CIA, they have the press, they have the US Army, they have NATO. They're going to throw everything they can at Russia to try to topple him. If they can't topple him, they're going to try to topple Pakistan, Kazakhstan. They're going to try to topple um, all the countries uh, that are supporting him and, yeah. and, and China. So, um, and, and if they fail at that, because it's 800 million people versus uh, 4.2 4 billion on the you know the Eurasian bloc, uh, the ruble looks like it's a likely candidate to be the new um, super currency incredible guys um there might be some proof of that in the chart of the dollar chart for uh if you guys see there the the goal of the uh, west there was to crash the ruble they took um russia had uh, 680 billion dollars of uh of money euros and uh, dollars and maybe a hundred hundred uh, billion of gold in, in the in the um in the custody of the uh of the other central banks uh and they it was confiscated at least yeah. half of it so when they confiscated half of russia's money and then they blocked them from being able to send um uh swift transfers so if you were russian in europe and you had visa mastercard you couldn't do it you couldn't send from a bank and um they wanted the ruble to crash and that that would lead to uh an uprising in the streets and they would uh throw the Russian government out and the West could put in somebody that was uh, favorable um, to them that would let them, you know, 
take the resources mm -hmm. of Russia through dollar, right? Because they just print as much dollars as they want. They buy all the resources of um, Russia while devaluing what they've given them. So um, you're looking at um, what didn't work, right? You see the dip there? I don't know if everybody on the screen can see it. Maybe zoom it in a little bit if you if you can do it there. Uh, yeah. So you can see that the ruble did collapse and then it made a huge recovery. So what's really happened there, it's kind of like the West West bankers, you know, the banking cartel run from London and New York. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the, the media machine run from uh, London, New York and D.C. and the NATO and everybody that threw it out, you know. That it was like a double or nothing, and they lost. And, and 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 they're not talking about that in the normal news. Like they're not explaining to people. Like so far, anything can still happen. It's not over. But as of now, they've lost, um, uh, and uh, the ruble has recovered, and even might go um, significantly higher. So actually, what they managed to do there was destroy the dollar. Yeah, and I think this chart shows the. This recovery shows the power of supply and demand, the move from Putin, what happening in the world, like, because he has a supply, and they have the demand also, that shows that they can recover so fast, and we, we see it working. Well, because they... And we know, have this announcement as well from yeah, Biden and Bank. They, exactly. They said, you have to pay for rubles for gas, and mm -hmm. people said, no, we can't, but no, they have to. So now Vatican Bank transferred 10 million euros to rubles to the Central Bank of Russia to pay for gas a couple of days ago. Uh, Germany and uh, France said they're not going to do it. Uh, they're going to have to do it, <laughs> and um, there's, no, uh, there's no other way. Uh, they, they obviously somebody would say, did these people not think about this before they threw the kitchen sink? But you see, this was run from the bankers. Yeah. So, uh, and the neocons, so there were, no, they, they, they didn't care. They just risked it all on red. You know, they, they went all in with, uh, the Western, uh, uh, wealth yeah. and, uh, they lost and, and now the economies are split. You could call the, um, the U S had, there's this guy named uh, Zoltan Posner, who's a well-respected guy, Credit Suisse. And he's an analyst and um, he talks about, you know, inside money versus outside money. But um, to me, I call it differently. It's like real money versus uh, measuring tape, uh, real assets like, um, uh, you know, food, uh, real things that people need. They're bought with money. But if 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 you have the real things and you don't accept the money, you're the powerful, mm -hmm. you, you know, ultimately people need the real things. And um, this is what's happening here is uh, Russia saying like, you can print your money all you want and it's worthless unless we accept, unless somebody accepts it. And uh, you're seeing more and more countries now getting on the bandwagon to get away from the U S dollar empire, which um, is dying in like the days of Rome, you know, it's, it's, it's completely collapsing. And, um, with the with the dollar goes the um, goes the euro, and um, I think people are going to be really surprised what happens. You know how how it's going to play out um, over the next six months uh, because you know it happens so fast, right? It's kind of like you know when there's an, an earthquake, uh, they know like three hours later. Often, if it's out in the ocean, a tsunami can come in. So the when the earthquake hits, you know, people uh, are shocked and their and their houses shaking and there's damage, and then it's like, the, but the real big shock wave of that tsunami is going to come some hours later. Mm -hmm. This tsunami of um, consequence that's going to come from the West going all in to, to take down a Russia and put it under the uh, under the U.S. dollar and basically make it a vassal state, it didn't work, and in fact that's going to boomerang back because it's not just Russia. There's Russia, India, Pakistan, China, South Africa, um, Brazil, Venezuela, uh, countries that number pretty close to 4 billion people mm -hmm. are uh, supporting. Uh, they don't want part of this dollar. Um, uh, they don't want to be in the empire. Yeah. They don't want to be slave states in the dollar empire. And um, so you're going to see you're going to see a shocking tsunami of consequence come back on the on the West, 
on the dollar and euro uh, empire. And um, it's going to hit. It's going to hit over the next three months. And within six months, it will have set in full. Now, let's not show that. Let's go to Sri Lanka because we're going to do a little preview. This may sound a little negative. I hopefully uh, uh, we're not trying to come in negative. We're trying to trying to make uh, realistic assessments of what we see. Because if you can make realistic assessments, Andreas, you can actually thrive in bad circumstances. You can be mentally prepared. You can uh, make right decisions. Um, you can make adjustments. And uh, we can be just, uh, we can do fine, you know, but it's very important to um, be prepared. And so what you can do, but um, the, 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 the tsunami has first hit Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the consequences, this is partially the consequences of the, of the lockdown of, of the, the, when all these countries locked everybody down, that also was going to have a, a shock wave and that shock wave is starting to hit now and it's going to be compounded. So let's take a look what happened to the Sri Lankan rupee and I'll explain uh, what's going on. It collapsed on, if everybody on the screen can see on the right hand side. Yeah. It collapsed around February. It collapsed. And what happened basically is they ran out of foreign exchange to support buying it. And they ran out of foreign exchange because for the last two years, the country has been locked down and they didn't have any money from tourism. So they're eating into their reserves. Right. And then once, once they don't have foreign exchange to buy, um, you know, cause they need to pay for oil and gas yeah. with, uh, the foreign exchange with dollars. So once they're running out of dollars, uh, or things, you know, cause people don't trust the rupee, um, and they need to try to go buy, um, dollars or something on, on the market. They just print them. Right. Mm -hmm. And also the lack of confidence, so everything's collapsed. And, um, they're the first, uh, not the first company country. I mean, Lebanon's collapsed as well. Uh, Venezuela collapsed some time ago. Uh, but let's take a look at what the face of this thing looks like. You know, we, last week we talked about it, Andres, we talked about what happened in, um, in Argentina in yeah, 2000, yeah, when yeah. their currency collapsed, when you have like a 60% uh, decrease in the purchasing power of your money, it is an immediate uh, nightmare in the society. So this is news guys where you're, this is live news. I mean, this is from a couple days ago, headlines, Sri Lanka, 50 injured as protesters tried to storm president's house amid economic crisis. Mm -hmm. So go highlight a few things for them and uh, talk about it. Yeah. Just look at the pictures as well. We're going to take a minute to watch at, uh, at the pictures. Okay. Let's find some, uh, there it will be, 50, 50 people were injured, arrested 45 people because they protest. And the, we have the petrol, that the price has risen from 128 rupees to 30, to 300, sorry, so more than double. Yeah, but you, a price increase is the same as a, a decrease in the purchasing power. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay so, so what, remember what we said, the, 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 the Argentinian peso, dropped 60, 60 to 70 percent in value very very quickly now that that shows here and that the prices go two and a go two and a half times higher yeah that's the same thing as you could say the price is the same it's just the rupee is not worth very much yeah. and that's if so, they find petrol though. yeah if the residents can find yeah. petrol the prices more than double, two and a half times increase. Yeah. Okay. So imagine a city of 5 million people, Colombo, 5 million people, um, no air conditioning because it's really hot there right now. 10, 10 to 12 to hours, power cuts. That's crazy. We've seen it in Argentina, we've seen, uh, Lebanon. So it's happening again right now. And uh, we have to emphasize what's happening in the world. They, they don't have diesel to operate the backup generators. Yeah. They, uh, all the supermarkets, um, you know, the, the freezing, the freezers go off. So all the cold goods are uh, ruined. Yeah. They make sure that they, they, they charge everything. So they're prepared and the internet, of course, is not working probably. So yeah, it's crazy. And they try to, to protest. Yeah. So it's, yeah, basically it's a nightmare. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, India recently extended a, a billion dollar loan, mm -hmm. uh, emergency loan to Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka could buy diesel. And I think that ship just hit the Harbor. So they're going to have some diesel to power some generators and, uh, 
have the buses because a lot of the people in Colombo don't have cars are relying on public transportation the whole I've been there you know it's a beautiful beautiful place I loved Colombo and I loved Sri Lanka but you got five million people in the city they're relying on uh, buses and uh, transportation so at least now with the diesel these buses I think are going to be running on diesel and uh, they're going to be moving but you know it, it tells you like you know we got to get in uh, you don't want to be in a city of five million people mm. when something like this happens you want to mm. be a country folk man who's got a farm growing some coconuts uh has got food and friends and community you do not want to be stuck in a city yeah. here's a report from a reddit about what was happening in sri lanka from the ground yeah they have fuel prices skyrocketed we covered that fx reserves dried up power cuts uh, more than 30 13 hours per day that's per day and uh, stock market trading uh hold it due to 10 percent crash today that i don't know when it was like a week ago or middle of the week no supplies of basics like milk toilet papers and ink mass protests tanks are now being brought into the streets <laughs> really you can protest all you want mm -hmm. but it's too late for protest you're stuck in a city and um the bankers and these governments have created a condition where multiple shockwave tsunamis are going to hit and you don't want to be in a big city you want to be in a small community you want to know where a well is mm -hmm. you want to have friends you want to be able to defend your community defend your food supply and um psychologically be psychologically uh, prepared for that and just learn to to live simple um and uh uh, because what's happening in Sri Lanka, this is just the first domino, in my opinion. You're going to see, um, you're going to see this happen in the West. And because you know, when people hear Sri Lanka, they go, "Oh yeah, it's Sri Lanka. It's not a good country. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a poor country," and that can happen. And they think uh, that could never happen in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it can happen in Germany, and it may happen in Germany so uh let's let's um let's take a look yeah let's jump across to uh this article and um uh, basically what what we're talking about there guys is <clears throat> with with the um could the euro collapse 50 percent in value or 60 percent of value or another way to say that andreas could the prices in europe for most important things go up double mm -hmm or two and a half times. If that's possible, that prices could go up two and a half times very quickly, that's what just happened in Sri Lanka. Okay, so um, if Russia turns off the gas, and there has been some discussion that they said they're doing it, okay, because they told Germany and uh, France and Italy, you have to pay for um, gas with, um, with uh rubles that they, they have to open a, a bank account in russia at a russian bank a rubles bank account and um you know then they can maybe send euros and it gets converted to rub uh, to rubles mm -hmm. and then the, the the gas uh sending will happen and uh, so it is within the realm of possible i wouldn't say likely but I would say like 30% chance. Um, most likely, um, uh, Germany will, um, will, will come to their senses and start paying with, with yeah. rubles. But that makes Russia superpower, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So they're stuck between make Russia superpower or collapse their economy like Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. These are the geniuses who run Europe, right? Yeah. These are the absolute geniuses in charge of Europe. They're freaking idiots. Okay, so now what we're looking at on the screen is an article today. <clears throat> now, what they're good at is PR. They're good at lying. <clears throat> they're good at doing whatever they want and then lying to the people and telling them they're doing something else, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Cyprus Mail, which is a propaganda outlet in my opinion I'm, I'm reading it for 20 years it's it feels to me like it's run by british intelligence and i dare someone from cyprus mail to contact me and prove me otherwise i mean it it feels like just a propaganda rag from run from uk which is freaking embarrassing 
for me being in Cyprus and reading this garbage. Here we go. Beware of wartime fake news triggering a run on the banks. Well, you know what that means? And if I decode you the propaganda speak, they're worried about a run on the banks. Mm -hmm. And they're being said, huh, somebody's going to tell you that, um, <laughs> We're not going to be told, right? We're going to know when the price of gas is two and a half, a half times t higher and the yeah. price of food is double. People, are, there's going to be a run on the banks because uh, people are going to realize that the whole thing's in collapse, right? So they're already trying to prepare people going, oh, beware of wartime fake news triggering a run on the banks. This is already shows you that they're extremely worried about a run on the banks. And it's not going to be because of fake news. It's going to be because, because of true news. Mm -hmm. Just reverse everything. It's like 1984 yeah. doublespeak. If you want to decode what's read in these mainstream news articles, you just like reverse it, right? If they say Russia cannot tell us what to do, then you just read the, the article. Russia can tell them what to do. <laughs> Beware of fake news triggering a run of the banks. Beware of real news triggering a run of the banks. Just it's an easy way to decode the news is just reverse it 100%, undo the doublespeak, and you can see what's going on. So I'm not looking forward to that because I live in Europe and, um, you know, I think um, I don't like human suffering and I don't want people to suffer. But you know what? Um, we have a rat snake infested uh, city that we live in the world. The world is infested with a bad banking model. It's a bad system and it's insidious. And, you know, it's it's going to have to get uh cleaned out and we're going to have to go through some hard struggles and then at the end of that it should be really good uh and very healthy for us so always look at the bright side that we're going to have to learn to live with less hey and here's the real bright side for some of you in the crypto chat um you know we have some rich people in the crypto chat we have some medium with some poor if you're already poor and you already know how to live with almost no money you are you're going to be like you know in 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 uh, feeling uh, um, you're going to be in a better position than uh, a lot of other people who do not know how to function with a low or no amount of money, don't know how to share, don't know how to find the networks of friends, don't know how to find the easy deals or people stuck in cities. So, um, yeah, so that, that, that may sound a bit negative, but, you know, the Sri Lanka, uh, you know, if, if Europe doesn't play its cards right, um, they could collapse the euro pretty yeah. quickly. Um, but I think over six months, um, the euro, um, they have to print a lot and you're going to see massive, massive inflation. It's already happening in Germany. Incredible inflation is already happening in Germany, guys. And, um, you know, I think, um, I think we're seeing the beginning of the end of these fiat yeah. uh, machines and uh, they're going to go. So then where's everybody going to go with their money? They're going to buy. Uh, resources like uh, commodities and they're going to buy cryptocurrencies and they're going to buy gold. Mm -hmm. I'm not a gold uh, promoter. It's hard to carry it around. I like gold, but it's, it's hard to carry it around. Um, you know, it's, uh, but let's take a look at something I think I do like. Here, here's a little more crypto. We're going to discuss about a little bit about that. Ethereum and Bitcoin. Will ever Ethereum suppress Bitcoin? And this is a topic that you mentioned a lot of times in the crypto chat. But uh, we had a question about Ethereum in the chat, but I can't yeah. find it. I think it was from Sabrina. That um, what if it, if uh, Russia starts on, uh, accepting Ethereum because it's a Russian? Yeah. Uh, well, certainly uh, they will because I think you know they both have massive liquidity, right? They already said they're accepting Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a country. If you're a country that is um, um, uh, friendly with Russia, you can pay uh, with Bitcoin. They'll accept Bitcoin, but they will not accept US dollars and they will not accept euros. Do you guys hear that? Russia has all the most important commodities in the whole world. Yeah. And they will not accept US dollars. They will not accept euros mm -hmm. unless they're converted to rubles in the background. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a mechanism for that. And they will accept Bitcoin. And of course, they will. Um, they didn't say it yet, but I'm sure they will accept Ethereum because Ethereum, as they said, Bitcoin is like a currency or a, an asset. Um, Ethereum is a network of it. It's a decentralized yeah. finance system. And um, I think that they're both going to shine and, and pull crypto to the moon because um, 
you know, all the different countries can already trust these. These things have been worked out for 10 years, these technologies. They've been well accepted. They've been well tested. And uh, everybody now knows the, the problems of how quickly uh, they, can, they can shut your bank account off. They did it in Cyprus. They did it in Canada. They, they, they just shut off a whole country, mm -hmm. uh, Russia. These bankers can just confiscate and take your money at any time they want. They can devalue it. They can take it from you. They can confiscate it from you. They can do whatever they want. So we're going to get out of their system. And we're getting into community-based money systems. Bitcoin is a, is a very big community behind it. Ethereum is a very big community, and they have smart contracts. So that's a lot of DeFi, um, a lot of uh, loan kinds of stuff, a lot of exchanges run off that. And Dogecoin is a community-based system yeah. where it doesn't have a lot of utility, but it has a big community supporting it. And TFA and TFC is the potential to be huge in Cyprus, especially if we have hard times, I'm not rooting for it, but I think it's going to happen. And I think we did design something that will help a lot of people get who are going to a the barter world. TFC could be so important as a lifeline in Cyprus. And as a model and use throughout the whole world of football being used for purchasing of NFTs. And imagine millions of people over the next years uh, as we work with football clubs to sell their NFT collections with TFC, discovering an asset that's easy to use, that's on exchanges, that's on DeFi exchanges, that has a great theme, that has a charitable aspect, that's got a fixed supply, that's got low transaction fees. We're sitting perfect, guys, for the next wave that's going to happen and um it looks good for crypto it looks good for us it looks bad for the euro yeah the u.s dollar is not as bad in the short term but let's see what jerome powell is up to to see you know uh what what's going to happen in yeah. six months right we're gonna have some music as well a little bit keep printing and printing and printing guys that's their answer <laughs> so far. They haven't announced anything. I swear, every time we check on it, yeah, it's the same thing. And, you know, the U.S. dollar has a lot of power still, yeah. but it's lost half its power. And a reckoning's going to come there. You know, I don't know when. I'm not a... Uh, but let's just say, I will predict that in uh, six months, that the euro is already in a severe crisis that there will even be some countries that will be bailing out of the eurozone mm -hmm. and uh, looking at trying to create their own currency um, because th the countries are are, are going to the only trick they know is to get their own currency and run their own printing press right now euro is running the printing press then countries like greece and other countries have to beg them for loans mm -hmm. before greece could print money now, i'm I think that's a dead end game, but you're going to see them drop back to their own currencies as survival. You know what I mean? As things get uh, more, more, uh, more in a hand. And I think you're going to see even some countries using a uh, ruble doing big deals with uh, Russia and with the Eurasian uh, economic union and like, like Greece will, will maybe uh, start to do huge business with that block, you know, where, where there's like real business happening. The dollar, um, you know, it's it's a big machine and um, no one knows when, when when but it's when the prognosis is bad i think it begins in six months mm -hmm. you got to watch the inflation and uh the bonds the bond market uh in the u.s the debt market <clears throat> when the interest rate starts spiking up very fast then you know that's game over yeah. for um the u.s dollar Right, it's uh, it's all based on on that. So we we don't know when it's going to happen, um, but it seems it's inevitable crash. But uh, no one knows when. You could you could easily see it by watching uh, watching the debt market. You know the, the the yields there, and when it's spiking up really high, um, or if inflation goes absolutely mental. You know, like in the next, it could it could start. It's going to start. Uh, a little bit earlier in Europe, and then and then and then it looks like it'll it'll spread into U.S. and you'll see more Sri Lanka-like stories over the next six months. Yeah. We'll have at least three, four stories, and um, you know I think uh, if if Germany doesn't play its cards right here, and uh, they may crash their uh, they may co collapse their country completely, yeah. they may kill their economy, 
and um, and and start off kind of a, a euro catastrophe and a crypto boom. With every negative, there's a corresponding positive that's going to be coming up, right? So just be ready for the change. Get into crypto. Get into TFC. Get into Ethereum. Get into Bitcoin. Um, get into the mindset of using less resources. Get into the mindset of getting out of the cities. You know, get into the mindset of knowing where there's a well, where there's water, where there's food. Make a friend with a farmer. <laughs> I'm serious. Because in the end of the day, these are the things that are real. Friends, family, community, food. Yeah. You know, we're going to keep our mantra going. Yeah, of course, we might all get rich too on top of that. But we can never forget these fundamentals again. They really got us messed up uh, on these things. Even if, even if we're rich, remember that the biggest wealth that you'll ever have is friends, community, food. You know, the ability to have uh, people working together in a small community is a treasure. It's better than being a billionaire, guys. To be a billionaire, nobody really loves you. They love your money. They work for you as long as you have the money. You know, you've got the government sniping at you. You've got people, competitors. It's not as powerful as community. So let's let's always keep our, yeah. our, our, our sense on, on that. And I don't think uh, there is any other way. Oh, there, there are a lot of ways, but I think the, the best way to get rich in crypto is to be a part of the community. From the start, it's the best, but be part of the community that is a process uh, token and some uh, philosophy behind it. Yeah, it a community rich. is money. And then they can adopt whatever crypto they want. Mm -hmm. And they can create uh, whatever they want. Community is money. People are money. Yeah. Yeah. And back to the Europe, we have Sabrina with a nice point right here. What about the countries that they haven't adopted uh, the euro, but they are in the European Union? Are they in, in, in a better position, maybe in a collapse? They're a step ahead for yeah. sure. So they're a step ahead for sure. But remember, here's the problem for Czech Republic um, they are the one of the three countries that is the most dependent on Russian uh, gas. And because they have, um, of course, very bad memories about the Soviet Union, right? And um, when they hear the word, you know, I don't think the Russia of today is, the, is even remotely close to the Soviet Union, but that's another, another talk mm -hmm. of another day. Uh, Czech Republic is, a, is, is, is two steps closer. First of all, Czech Republic um, has a lot of community and a lot of rural and a lot of farming and a lot of food. Remember, over in Czech Republic, beer is like one euro. One thing they learned is like when their economy was down on the ground under the Iron Curtain days, that you know the one euro beer and the sense of community. They have a lot of things going for them there in Czech Republic. They're tough. They can live on uh, low amount of money. But what, all I'm saying is their their economy is depending on. Russian gas and their, their um, you know, they're basically, I feel like making a mistake by supporting the NATO and banking cartel and uh, fighting with Russia. And uh, I mean, I, that, I would be a minority opinion. I know that probably there, you know, 90 people out of 100 would disagree with that up there. So I understand that. But Uh, Czech is in a much better position being out of the Eurozone already because they have their own independent currency ready to go and functioning. They're uh, very industrious and very smart people. They have a lot of farming. They have a lot of capability. They have a lot of community. Um, and um, and uh, if they can, um, boy, if they just, if they made friends with Russia, their economy would keep going. If they don't, they're going to suffer, but that's their choice. They can do whatever they want. It's, you know, it's up to them. Yeah. Um, I think we want to close off with an article right here before. Oh yeah. What, what's happening to the dollar? Cause yeah. maybe show, show the thing uh, the, the, just so I can reiterate that I'm not um, just throwing completely wild uh, conspiracy theories out there, you know, because what I'm saying today is pretty intense. Okay. So, Armstrong Economics, this guy's in New York City. He's one of the smartest economists. He's not an academic economist. He's, a, he's an absolute genius. He built a software that could predict when does a country go bankrupt. And the government wanted out of him. And they put him in jail because he wouldn't wow. give him the source code. So Martin Armstrong is an absolute genius. Okay, And he's saying 
Biden is out to destroy the U.S. financial markets. I mean, they're destroying the U.S., Europe, of course, uh, with it. So I'm not the only one saying this yeah. is just a matter of time. Uh, hit the next one. And of course, we have the U.S. trying to create a digital dollar. It's not just that they're trying to create a digital dollar. They're trying to get cash. <laughs> you know, they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to release a new currency. They, they know they've collapsed the dollar. They're trying to, they're trying to like increase the surveillance state. Mm. They're going all in, man. They want to be 1984. Do you see what I mean? Everybody gets vaccinated every day. Okay. You have to ask for permission where you're going to go. Um, you you um, you have to use their digital cash, and if you spend it on the wrong thing, it, you know yeah. you're gonna have a self-driving car that if you say one thing against the government, drives you to the police station and dumps you in a pit. I mean, this is what they're going for. You know what I mean? So, but thank God, um, thank God, this empire is crashing and burning. I hate to say that, really, but I'm so grateful because. I don't think people understand what these people had in store for the world. You know, what, what they were introducing was nothing to do with the old American values, the old American constitution. It was everything to do with the World Economic Forum and the re redux of the, uh, you know, the 1850s uh, uh, Congress of Vienna and all the, 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 the things of you know, the centrally controlled world from these European elites. And uh, I'm not disappointed. I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to, I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to pay the price to uh, have the kids have a better future without yeah. these nut jobs running the world, right? Where we have community-based systems. Yeah. So yeah, and I think we have one more on that, Andreas, or was that the U.S. Something on the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Put that one on. Try to play. No, don't play it. Just put the uh, rewind it to the first. Rewind it so you can see the first subtitle. That's all I wanted to show on the screen. That's the first. Okay, I wanted to show this right yeah. here. <laughs> this guy is saying, I mean, of course, he's in the, I think he's in the Russian Duma, right? So everybody okay. goes, oh, my God, if it's Russia, there, you know, okay. <laughs> he's saying there won't be an America in 2024. That's their perspective. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're saying that from all the same things we're saying like we're observing the same things that they're probably observing right they have all the resources in russia they have the gas they have the food they have all the they make all the you know they have all the the resources china makes all the stuff mm -hmm. you know all the labor you know, all the labor is coming from all of those worlds all the other rest of the resources are in africa what's not there is in brazil and venezuela um, and all those countries in South Africa and what, what all these countries don't want to be part. They want to have their independence. They want to have their own money systems. They want to have their own. I'm, I'm against all the governments for the record. I don't like any governments. Uh, I like people. I like communities. And if, if, I, if I could have a way we could build a world where governments, big governments were illegal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if somebody tried to do that, that's like, uh, that's not, you know, we don't, we never want that. Right. I love if we could have modern technology and super smart local communities, right, where we all get along. Uh, if, you know, you could have a lot of choices where you'd, where you'd want to live, you know, like this kind of community, and then, you know, go to a different one. And uh, we just would have, like, a lot of fun. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's a dream beyond what, what's realistic. Yeah. But, you know, if this whole thing, and there is, you know, if America breaks in pieces and Europe breaks in pieces and um, China breaks in pieces and Russia breaks in pieces because... It could happen too, Andreas. Like the, you know, Russia could become the next superpower. Europe breaks into pieces. U.S. breaks into pieces, and then Russia breaks into pieces, and then China breaks into pieces, and communities take over. I'm rooting for it, actually. I'm rooting for it, and I uh, hope uh, TFC has a role to play to help people in these contexts. So anyway, hopefully that's a positive note to what is probably a pretty heavy day of discussion here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> down with the new world or, a, order, says James B. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's a saying that says uh, after after a rainy day, there's always a rainbow. So yeah. maybe we're set to that. They, 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 they probably also someone says after a rainy day, there's also a mudslide. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep the positive at least. <laughs> okay, so I think that was it for today, guys. Uh, any questions before we close up? Um, I'm gonna.
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, comment the video. We'll go, maybe we're going to announce that uh, next week we're, we're trying to introduce a new uh, section to the crypto chat where we're going to review specific cryptos just for five, 10 minutes. And it will be nice if you comment any any specific cryptos, any other projects that you want us to to review them just for five minutes as a, as a new, new section to the crypto chat. Uh, so don't forget to write down in the comments after the, the video finishes. Yeah, happy Sunday to everyone. And uh, we have a lot of new stuff coming this week, both for Panda Token, for Silly Pandas, for Ballers, for TFA. So make sure you download TFA, the football app, both yeah. on App Store and Google Store. Yeah, and keep in mind, uh, for those of you on uh, TFA News, our model is perfect. Um, we now have the app in the iPhones updated. We need to speed it up a bit, but you can see the focus around the team, around chat, and around NFTs. We're just going to go team to team to team for the next 18 months, signing hundreds of teams, getting them to sell their, selling their NFTs, getting their fans into the app. That is demand on TFC. It's a grind, and it'll bring us to glory. Yeah. That's the that's the path there, guys, and it's extremely good. And as the our notoriety rises, the public rises as influencers get behind us they're going to look at our collections ballers silly pandas are you know a whole everything every football think about if you're a football fan from a team and you came in for the first time to buy an nft for that football club you're not going to buy a baller and a silly panda while you're at it mm -hmm. grab these things you're 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 in a you know um we have the goods we have the equipment we have the model we have the persistence we have the staying power and we have the luck of the timing we're in the right place at the right time. Other people flashed up quicker, but it's a game. It's a long game. Who can really deliver the value in the end, you know, which ecosystems? And we're, we're, we're going to be one that delivers the value. All right, everybody. Um, in, in about, let's see, I'm going to run the... I'm going to run the, uh, the trivia faster this time. So give me 30 minutes, and you're going to have a trivia in the, uh, the bonus room. And yeah. so we'll throw you out the code. So uh, one last question before we close is any news on the World Cup? Yes, of course. And maybe we'll announce it in the next uh, few weeks. Our plans for the World Cup, of course, yeah, of course. the football app. So. And, 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 and uh, the World Cup is going to boost us a lot. We're going to do stuff for the World Cup. And um, the World Cup could be something that gets us into the world stage, guys. But uh, we, we'll talk about these things uh, on another This time. is a perfect that we're going to close off the today's crypto chat it's a marathon not a sprint it took us some years and took us some time to deliver and create this whole ecosystem the tfa has but yeah it's a marathon yeah for we, sure. we, we took the hard road build real products build real value and um you know that you you guys know that's what we're about and you've watched us consistently keep building look how far we've come so yeah we appreciate yeah. that you guys see that you guys are the community you are the money We've just created tools that you can use to measure them and create tools that we can use to kind of um, superpower our intelligent uh, ecosystem. So, uh, what, you know, thank you for being part of it. Get your friends into it. Tell them this is something very important. The world's changing fast. It's not an optional thing to get involved in a crypto ecosystem. And if they don't have a lot of money, they can get in and start earning uh, TFC. Everybody should be buying. Go to your rich friends and tell them you're, you're buying. So what do you think is going to happen with these fiat currencies? You know, they're out of their mind not making investments in, in, uh, in the crypto ecosystems. And you can tell them boldly to do it. And if you want, tell them, you know, have them contact me and I'll get on a Zoom call and uh, straighten them out good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to see everyone next next Sunday. Download the football app, comment to the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and, of course, share it with your friends. We're going to see everyone inside the bonus room at, in, in football app and next Sunday with the next Crypto Chat episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>